So yes, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to come. We, asked, we were supposed to be at the convention center. I, I agree. But this is life. Things happen. Changes do come. I can't answer your question, my son. I too do not know why we're not at the convention center. But I came prepared to address the youth. That's what we were asked to do. We were asked to encourage the youth to talk about Africa's future. The future that we all know can only succeed when our youth are empowered with knowledge. That is what all of us have done here. To my right, Professor Lumumba, he speaks nothing but the truth about our beloved continent and way forward. To my right, Honorable Peter Obi, same thing, same message. The world at large, they know that Africa's future is in the hands of our youth. So New Africa Foundation specifically requested us to come and address African youth, starting with the youth in Ghana. I grew up in a farmland somewhere in Ghana, in Kumasi. And I was birthed by a woman who is a spiritualist. And she raised me on a farmland. But she raised me with the fear of the Lord. And she gave me a capital. The capital was the advice she gave me. She said, son, learn how to give to the world. And the world will always come embracing you. I took those words with me. And that was the beginning of the birth of the new Africa Foundation. That wasn't the name then, but we were givers. So we have been givers for three decades. And it grew, and it grew, and it grew. But I thought that having a foundation was just about giving. As it was growing, I realized that it's also about being responsible for the society you belong to. And that's how today we're sitting here. Seven months ago, I decided that the greatest voices in Africa should come together and start to speak for how Africa should be governed by Africans and not foreigners and not other people who are interested in whatever resources that we have in our countries. But we should be responsible for our own human resource and mineral resources. And the only way to do that is to industrialize our people and our minerals. So I want to use this moment to first of all thank all of you to accept this invitation. Who would I, how would I have thought of myself that coming from a farmland, a six-year-old boy that didn't have anything, would one day call upon people like you, and you accept my invitation. A young man like me, and people that can birth me, people that can be my aunties, my uncles, my leaders, my president. But you listen to the voice of the young man, and you came here to speak to the youth and the people of Africa. They say the greatest creation, or the most pinnacle creation, is the human's mind and it must be used for a good purpose. Africa is lacking education, but not the type of education like doctor was talking about. The sort of education that should come from our own. How to learn about our own resources. How to know to add value to our people. When you take value away from people, you stop the economy of your own country. You stop the growth of your own country. When you add value to the people, the country starts to grow. And Africa is about to grow because we are ready to add value to humanity, to the people who are Africans. So the purpose of New Africa is not only to give you food, is not only to organize a convention for us to meet and give you knowledge, but it's also to stand up and become responsible for the social responsibilities of this continent that will build the youth for the future of Africa is in the hands of the youth. They have more years ahead of them. 
and at least we have lived half through uh, our lifetime, and some of us have even gone past that, but we thank God for giving us life. And we need to think about our children. We need to think about the youth who are coming up. So again, when I look at this opportunity, I don't take it lightly. You might call it a failure. I see it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Being here and being with us is four different leaders from four different sides of Africa coming to Ghana makes me feel that this is the headquarters of Africa. People have value for Ghana. They have value for Accra. The leaders of Africa, I would like to use this moment to urge that please look into your youth. You have the Nkrumahs in there. You have the Marcus Garvey's in there. You have the Martin Luther's in there. You have great leaders in the youth. Give them the chance. Let them just help. Let them add value to the people. Let them support us. Let's support ourselves. Let's build ourselves again. And on this note, I would like to say sorry to those that couldn't participate with us in the convention. But right here, I am seeing the convention. This is the convention. This is the birth of the convention. This is the convention. I can tell you as clearly and plainly as I can, that I never heard the conversation about him being a millionaire. I never had a conversation about him having political ambitions. The time that I've spent with him has been more to do with entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and the possibilities. So for those who are saying uh, we are here to support him uh, further his political ambitions, that is a damn lie. Certainly, from my interactions with him, I don't know about whether he told Professor that. I don't know if he told uh, my brother, Honorable Peter, that. I might want them to clearly state that, whether that conversation ever took place. But the interactions I've had with Nana Bediago have been about entrepreneurship and the possibilities of what we can do if the African youth could be empowered. Mm -hmm. And how we can raise money to support African youth so they can build the Africa that we want. Mm -hmm. That's all the conversation I've had. Anything else, I do not know. But I felt I should let all of you journalists know because I'm sure you're going to hear the same rumor that I just heard. These are the conversations I've had with my son. And I'll tell you one more thing. When the invitation came, Professor can tell you, I didn't know my son, but I had to do homework. What got me to accept the invitation is his age and the fact that he's a youth. Mm. Because if we do not support our youth, then who is going to support them? I hired a young man one time, he said, doctor, nobody wants to hire me because I have no experience. But how do I get experience if I don't get a job to begin with? I said, son, you're hired. I accepted an invitation from Nana, not because I knew him, but because of his age and the amazing things that he's doing at such a young age. It is that plain and simple. Anything else is a lie. I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll join um, in what uh, she said. You're very correct. It is about her entrepreneurship. I met him again by on the 4th, because <laughs> Prof who invited me. And uh, I got a call from him and he said, he's around somewhere in Lagos. Can he come and visit me? I said, no, I'll come and visit you. And he was sending about hey, He said, since you're thinking about this, I'll come and visit you. And surprisingly, on arrival in Accra today, a young lady came along that said, I work with the youth and entrepreneurship. And I want you to talk or help us. 
talk about entrepreneurship. I said, we are coming to Ghana to talk about entrepreneurship. And you just asked me a question. How do we spark entrepreneurship among the youth in Africa? I say, fight one thing, corruption. Mm. And you look at me. Mm. I say, corruption kills three things that mm. makes a society. It kills entrepreneurship. Nobody thinks in a corrupt mm. country mm -hmm. because there's easy money to make, <laughs> but still. <laughs>